Hello everyone. Welcome to this video lesson. In this video lesson, we are going to talk about a two-dimensional elastic collision. Two-dimensional means after the collision, the bodies are not restricted to only one dimension. They are moving in a plane. A collision is elastic. That means both momentum and kinetic energy is conserved. I am taking a special case where the two bodies are identical in nature, where masses are equal. And the second body is initially in the state of rest. It's not having any initial velocity. If this is the case, I am going to prove that after the collision, these two bodies are going to move perpendicular to each other. Let us try proving it rather than saying a statement. So let us consider a body having a mass m moving with a velocity u. Second body is also identical in nature that is initially in the state of rest. This is the line of action. After the collision these two bodies are going to move in different directions. Let this is the first body moving with a velocity v1 making an angle theta to the original direction. Let this is the second body who is also m moving with a velocity something like a early n1 with a velocity v1, second one with a velocity v2 but their masses are identical in nature. Let it is making a different angle theta2. Now putting the conditions as momentum is conserved Momentum along x-axis as well as y-axis is conserved. So momentum along x-axis initially equal to momentum along the x-axis finally. I can resolve this mv as we have done in the previous video also into components. This is m1 v1 cos theta 1. I need not write m1. Writing m is sufficient. Identical bodies now. This is m v sin theta 1. Similarly, this body is having momentum m v2 in this direction. So, m v2 cos theta 2 along the same positive x axis. m v2 sin theta 2 in the downward direction. So this momentum along y direction are actually opposite to each other. Coming back to the momentum along x axis. First body has momentum mu. Second body in the state of rest therefore it has no momentum along x axis. m v1 cos theta 1 that's the momentum of the first body after the collision. M V2 cos theta 2. That's the momentum of the second body after the collision. Being bodies are identical, masses can be cancelled. I can write now U as V1 cos theta 1 and V2 cos theta 2. Let me call it as equation number 1. Now, Writing or equating the momentums along the y axis. Py initial equal to Py final. Initially the first body is not having any velocity or momentum along y axis because it's moving along x axis. Second body is in the state of rest itself. It has no momentum in any direction at all. Finally, m v1 sin theta 1 in upward direction. The second body has m v2 sin theta 2 in downward direction. Being there in opposite, I have shown them with a negative sign. That implies you got 0 as m can be taken to the other side and simply can be cancelled. v1 sin theta 1 minus v2 sin theta 2. Let me call it like equation number 2. Now what I will do is, I will square the first equation 
and I will square the second equation and add both of them for a simplicity sake. First equation left hand side is u. So squaring that becomes u square. Second equation left hand side is 0. So adding that 0 is still going to keep the left hand side of my same. Squaring the right hand sides of each, each of the equation. v1 cos theta 1 v2 cos theta 2 whole square this RHS and this RHS also plus v1 sin theta 1 minus v2 sin theta 2 whole square. Now let me simplify this equation further. That implies u square equal to this is something like simply a square plus b square. So I will write a square that is v1 square cos square theta 1 b square v2 square cos square theta 2 and 2ab that's nothing but 2v1 v2 cos theta 1 and cos theta 2 that's the expansion of the first term. Let us similarly expand the second term also. This is the second term v1 sin theta 1 minus v2 sin theta 2 whole square. Let us expand that also. That is again using a formula a minus b whole square a square plus b square minus 2ab that is v1 square sin square theta 1 v2 square sin square theta 2 minus because a minus b na 2v1 v2 sin theta 1 and sin theta 2 it's a big equation let us try simplifying that equation further just by rearranging the terms we can see v1 uh, square cos square theta and sin square theta let us take that v1 square common that applies simplifying that equation further u square equal to v1 square of cos square theta 1 plus sin square theta 1 v2 square of again cos square theta 2 and sin square theta 2. Remaining terms 2v1 v2 of cos theta 1 cos theta 2 minus sin theta 1 sin theta 2. Simplifying this further. You know sin square theta plus cos square theta equal to 1. So v1 square of cos square theta 1 plus sin square theta equal to 1. v2 square of again cos square theta 1 sin square theta equal to 1 plus 2 v1 v2 of cos theta 1 cos theta 2 minus sin theta 1 sin theta 2. It's a formula in trigonometry cos a plus b equal to cos a cos b minus sin a sin b. So this is nothing but equal to cos of theta 1 plus theta 2. Let me call it like equation number 3. Until now, we were talking about only conservation of momentum. But being elastic collision, kinetic energy is also conserved. As kinetic energy is conserved, I can write kinetic energy initial equal to kinetic energy final. Kinetic energy initial half m u1 square. Second body is initially not having any kinetic energy. After the collision, half m v1 square, half m v2 square. All half m's can be cancelled. u1 square equal to v1 square plus v2 square. That's the equation number. There is no u1 actually. We can call that u1 as a u itself. Equation number 4. Let's compare equation number 3 and 4. Both the LHS are u squares only. RHS is v1 square plus v2 square. 
there is no third term actually. So, what is the meaning of that there is no third term? The third term has to be equal to 0. That implies this entire term has to be equal to 0. 2v1 v2 of cos theta 1 plus theta 2 equal to 0. So, 2 cannot be 0, v1 and v2 cannot be 0 because they are having some values. Obviously, cos of theta 1 plus theta 2 equal to 0. Cos is 0 when the theta is nothing but equal to 90 degree. That means theta 1 plus theta 2 is 90 degree. That means after the collision, the two bodies are going to move perpendicular to each other. That means if this is the first body moving with a velocity u, second body in the state of rest. If the first body moves with a velocity v1, identical bodies of course. Second body moves with a velocity v2. If this is theta 1, if this is theta 2, this total angle is nothing but 90 degree. So after the collision, these two bodies move perpendicular to each other. This is the point that we need to learn. That is, in two-dimensional elastic collision, if two bodies are identical in nature and the second body is in the state of rest after the collision, whatever may be their velocity is, they are going to move perpendicular to each other. This is the point of learning. Thank you for watching. Keep coming back for more and more video lessons. Thank you.